Theodore Roosevelt once said, the credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena. I believe there's a hero in all of us that keeps us honest, gives us strength, makes us noble. So that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. Seize the day whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotions, and spends himself in a worthy cause. And I'm gonna stay right here and fight for this lost cause. You've got to get mad. I mean plumb mad dog mean. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. Who at best, if he wins, knows the thrills of high achievement, and if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly. I'm gonna show you how great I am. It's a lot of little kids dream to be a firefighter. Uh, and very few of us actually get to fulfill that dream. I was very surprised he got out of the limo and just ran up and he hugged me right away. He had never met me before and he acted like we hadn't seen each other in 10 years. He was sworn in as a firefighter for the city of Tampa for the day. And uh, he was able to use the gear. It was a little big on him, but we made do. I think he really enjoyed it. He was able to go on their fireboat. From there, he got on one of our ladder trucks and responded into a vehicle accident where he got to use the jaws of life and actually cut up a car. And as soon as we dropped that tool, he went over to a simulated tanker fire. We had flames 20 feet in the air and he got right on the front of that nozzle and just had a blast. You could just see it in his eyes. He was having a blast. For sick children, I think that it's a time for their families to just take their minds off it for that short amount of time that we had them. I think it's a really good experience. I, I wish that everyone on the job could experience it and see the joy that it did bring them. You're put on this earth for a lot of different things, but to change lives, is such an incredible thing. It's such an incredible feeling. And I'll put my head on the pillow tonight knowing we change another life. It really is great to see the community come together on a wish. I know that 10 years from now, he's going to be talking about this day. And what better way to spend your time and to spend your days on this earth into changing lives of other people. The key phrase there is changing lives. At a time here in America when everybody seems to be arguing with each other and everybody seems to be angry. How nice is it, just for a moment, maybe just for a day, if you will, to enjoy the fact that a kid or anybody can simply just enjoy a day and find a little brightness in what seems to be a very dark time. That's the job of those who deal in nonprofits, the charities, the ones who are out there every single day trying to make a difference. Yet here in the age of COVID-19, things have changed for everybody. It's become more difficult. A lot more scams out there. And also reaching people to tell these stories has become much more engaged, if you will. However, one organization that I have been lucky enough to be associated with for a long time has been doing exactly this for a long time. And they are making sure that the kids are always taken care of. Hi, once again, everybody. I'm Ed Berliner. Thanks so much for joining us here on The Man in the Arena, a very special edition. As we look forward to what we all can do, even here in a very difficult time. A reminder, once again, our show is live on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Also, don't forget that when the show is over, you can see the show downloaded on YouTube, and also you can listen to the shows on every single one of the major audio platforms. Let's get to it. The Make-A-Wish Foundation does just that. It makes wishes come true. And you've seen one kid smile, but there's so much more left to do in very difficult times. My guest is an old friend. We've known each other a very long time, and he has been at the forefront of making sure that these kids are happy, their parents are happy. But boy, I'll tell you, what they're forced to do in this summer of COVID-19 is yeoman's work indeed. 
They all need a tremendous amount of applause for what they do. It's a pleasure to welcome the Chief Operating Officer of Make-A-Wish Southern Florida into the man in the arena. Richard Kelly joins us on the show. Richard, good to see you again, my friend. I'm sorry I don't have any Florida State memorabilia here with me, so I feel bad I wasn't properly prepared. (laughs) Well, we're going to put our college allegiances to the side. It's an honor to be with you, Ed. I have no problem rooting for Florida State at, at any time, my friend. There's there's a couple of other teams I have a problem with, but you, I'll go with any time. Let's start right there, because you, what we saw was a kid enjoying himself. So let's start on the positive side of things here for the Make-A-Wish of South Florida. When COVID-19 struck, everybody immediately started to think of what could happen, what might happen. I know that You all got together, friends of mine, I I know mostly everybody involved, and you had to be scratching your heads a little bit and go, we don't know what we're doing. We're walking into completely untested territory right now. How did you prepare for this time, knowing that the single most important thing you had to do was still make the wishes come true? Sure. Well, we've been saving for rainy days for, it seems like, forever. You know, so uh, we've taken our financial prosperity and and put a uh, nest egg away for days such as as today and times such as these. And the bummer is that we're just not able to grant wishes at the clip that we normally can. And that's just due to circumstances, you know, children that are traveling, children that are going to uh, places that have large gatherings of people. We're just not able to grant those wishes right now. And um, so, we're, we are granting some wishes, um, wishes that are local in nature, wishes that are gifts, uh, those sorts of things, but they certainly are a small percentage of what we are capable of granting. From the human side of things, when you knew what was coming and you knew that things were going to change, how did you then think about that? Because you know you've got so many kids ready to go, but then you don't want to disappoint them, but dealing with them and then dealing with their parents and having that plan ready, I think, had to be a little bit more intricate and a little bit more emotional for anybody than just worrying about the finances. Sure. Well, we we rely on doctors to give us a lot of the guidance. And we're, of course, listening to the CDC and some of the um, healthcare professionals. Um, We have a local uh, medical advisory council and a national medical advisory council. So we lean on them to guide us through these times. And it's their recommendation and certainly makes a lot of sense that we just keep children children out of harm's way and certainly the children that we deal with that are uh, dealing with critical illnesses and are immunocompromised and some of the situations that they're dealing with we certainly want to keep them out of harm's way so we are on the side of caution and on the side of safety of the wish kids and when it's safe to do so we'll start introducing those kids uh, based uh, back into the back into wishes based on the recommendations of our medical advisors, uh, the CDC, and healthcare professionals. Tell us a little bit about that because we we are constantly hearing about CDC and medical advisors that are getting involved that are helping organizations such as yours. Give us an idea of of what you go through on a on a daily, weekly, monthly basis to constantly keep up with this. Because let's face it, there's a lot of people who thought this would be over by now. But in reality, we're looking at something that I guess the doctors are going to tell us will stretch into 2021 at the very least. Sure. And like I said, we're erring on the side of caution. And, and we have a lot of great medical people that are make wish people. You know, we've uh, even outside of the COVID era, we uh, utilize our medical advisory council to advise us on a lot of different things. You know, if, if a wish is, an appro- is appropriate for a particular child. Um, if, you know, and if there are other issues in the medical field that we just rely on those people to uh, give us guidance. We're not medical people for the most part. We r- rely on them to give us guidance and they, we know that they're going to make a decision that's best for our wish kids and their families and for their safety and their health. And, and they have intimate knowledge of what our wish kids are going through, the illnesses, diseases that they're going with and what their immune systems are like. So. Uh, COVID just gave us uh, an opportunity to ramp up that uh, that level of communication with them, with our uh, medical advisory council, and they they work in in tandem with uh, some of the some of the CDC and uh, World Health organizations and some of those some of those other organizations to make decisions that's best for our wish kids. And you've also got to not just think about what's happening in your organization, but I mean, if you have wish kids, I mean, you've had wishes that have been granted at 
Walt Disney World, at Universal Studios, at um, in the in the uh, in the waterways of South Florida, uh, all sorts of different places. How difficult is it to deal with that? Because it it is another layer, if you will, of I don't want to say um, uh, that will stop you, but they've also got to be involved, and they're also part of all this. So, so how difficult is that to make sure that you you coordinate all of this with so many different places that you have to have these wishes in? That all goes into the decision making process. You know, most of our wishes do involve travel. Uh, so they take our wish kids to other places, and we have a network of chapters of medical people, of really smart individuals that are uh, loving and caring for our wish kids. So. Um, when our wish kids travel, we're going to make sure that it's safe for them to, them to do so. If they go to theme parks, not only do we want it to be safe, but we want it to be the same experience that they've always uh, that they've always had. Um, because the Disney experience, the Disney cruise experience, um, the seeing snow experience, you know, those those are special to us. You know, those are we we work really hard to and meticulous we're meticulous about putting those wishes together to create a magical experience for a wish kid and their families. And uh, we want to make sure that that experience is the same uh, outside of COVID. Uh, so not only is there health and safety uh, part of it, but we also want to make it a great experience. They get one shot at this wish and we want to make it a great experience for them. Give us an idea of the kind of wishes that you get, because I, I know having having been around that there's there's so many different types of wishes if you will and there's so many different kinds of of ideas that that, that a kid can wish for because i mean if, if we just look at the list and here it is right now i haven't seen it i mean i wish to go i wish to be i wish to meet i wish to have i wish to give which is the thing that really caught me because you have a lot of kids who want to go places but there's others who want to give back to the community that's that, that that's a beautiful that's a beautiful story yeah, sure. When we ask a wish kid what uh, the, what they wish for, it's only limited by their imagination. And uh, but the, the wishes generally fall into these categories: meeting a celebrity, going somewhere, uh, being something. So it's an occupation wish. You know, you you we opened the the show today uh, with a firefighter from Tampa. A child wanted to be a firefighter. Uh, and then there's I wish to have in a new category in this socially conscious era now of wish kids that give back. And uh, we did a wish a few months ago for a, a girl who, who came down from Canada and she wanted to clean up the ocean. She wanted to help clean up the ocean. Um, so there are more and more of those that are happening, so, so much so that they've created their own category uh, are, uh, within our organization. So, uh, you know, the wishes generally fall into these categories, but they are, they are only limited by the child's imagination. And wish kids get very inventive. And um, so those are our favorites. Um, of the ones that the wish kids are uh, invent, and if when they're in, when they invent a superhero char uh, character or uh, some other type of wish that involves their imagination, it's really great for us to grant. It really gives us the opportunity to flex our creative muscles. What are the parameters that you you give parents and people here? Because obviously, there's certain things that are easier than others, certain things that are doable, and kids will wish for. Yeah. The kid will actually go ahead and wish to have a Spider-Man shooter coming out of his hands if, if you give him the opportunity. So I imagine you got to hit him with some sort of, okay, parents, we, we all have to work together here, and there's a couple of lines here. Sure. If it's, it wishes, if they're physically possible for us to grant, we're going to grant them. You know, it's, And uh, we had a child a few years ago who wanted to say, do you want to go be an astronaut and go to the moon? Well, we're not able to send a child to the moon, but we send him to space camp. And so he went to space camp. He met real astronauts who had been to the moon. Uh, he got to try on his own, his own special space suit. He went into a simulator. So um, there are parts of the, those experiences that we can create. And again, we've, you know, we get to create, uh, flex our creative muscles on those. And um, it really is gratifying for us to be able to grant that wish that we know that it's a heartfelt wish for that child. I wanted to bring back that one you talked about, Vanessa, who was the 18-year-old from Quebec, was battling cancer and then wanted to go clean up waterways. I, I, something like that strikes me as so selfless, Richard. That's the thing, because we think of kids as being selfish in many ways, yet we have kids like these, and as they get a little bit older, they, they get a little more in tune with with what they want to do with what will help society. Is that fair to say that you get the older child 
and they become a little bit more uh, in, involved in how they might be able to give back in some way. Sure. Uh, yeah, sure. We see pat we see patterns um, with our wishes. The younger wishes, younger wish kids. Uh, a lot of it is Disney, Disney centric, Disney cruises, etc. Uh, those early preteen uh, kids. There's a lot of celebrities in there. A lot of mini celebrities. And then the older kids. It really is a is a mix. But we're again we're starting to see some of that give back uh, because uh, kids nowadays are exposed to a lot more. And um, so. Vanessa actually um, saw, a, you know, she saw about Four Ocean. She read about Four Ocean on the internet, and a Four Ocean is a local company who helps clean up the ocean. So we partnered with them to grant her a wish, but she learned about that on the internet. So, uh, so we work with the ch uh, chapter in Canada to fly her down here and give her an experience, a multi-day experience, cleaning out the ocean and seeing what the operation is like. Another thing too that strikes me is the cooperation that you get from certain organizations. Now, you and I have both known each other a long time, and you know that I've been in sports my whole life. And quite frankly, I see some people in sports who are the nicest people in the world, but some sports people are also the most arrogant in the world, and they're the, the most difficult sure. to deal with so many times. Organizations are tough to deal with, although I would think dealing with the National Hockey League might be easier, but that's just a personal thing more than anything else. <laughs> But when I saw the wish that this young man, Max, wanted, and he wanted to get involved with the New Orleans Saints, now that grabbed me. good friend of ours was probably watching today, Joe Casale, is a huge New Orleans Saints fan. He's also been around sports for a long time. Stu Opperman, our other great friend who's also involved in Make-A-Wish, he knows sports as well as us, and we all kind of know those athletes that we deal with. I love the fact that there was a, a professional sports organization involved, and it made me wonder if – Indeed, you get that kind of cooperation from them all, or do you sort of pick and choose as you go? Uh, we get cooperation from all of them. You know, we have great relationships with all of the professional leagues. Um, you know, we don't get a lot of NHL wishes uh, per se. Um, I'm going to work know, on that. Really... I'm working on that. I'm going to make sure <laughs> that happens. I'm going to call my buddy at the NHL. I'm going to make sure that happens. But when we do, they're great wishes. It's just we don't influence what wish kids wish for, and so they tend to they tend to gravitate toward the the athletes with the highest Q rating. And and Max just was was a New Orleans Saints fan, and they created a great wish experience for him. Um, they won the game. Drew Brees set the uh, all time TV uh, touchdown uh, uh, scoring mark. Um, and he just had a great weekend with his family, and you know that's an important part of what we do is we involve the entire family uh, because the families are involved and the families are affected by what the wish kid is going through. You know, a lot of times their, uh, their day-to-day normal routines and what they would consider normal life is disrupted by uh, the child's illness and treatment and, you know, families just don't get to spend a lot of time together. But during a wish, we believe that the family should be together and we believe that it is a healing family experience for them. And it's part of what, as a family guy myself, it's what it's, in, it's, it's an important part of this uh, for me is that we involve the entire family because of what they're going through and then what they're going to be able to benefit from during the wish. I want to turn to a couple of issues here because we will get back to the kids a little bit. And I want to remind everybody that you'll have all the information you have if you're watching live or if you're watching on the video repeat on YouTube. You'll be able to see on the lower portion of the screen, we'll have all of the various ways you can get a hold of Make-A-Wish South Florida. Make sure you do that. But before we do that, let, let's get to some of the serious things. One thing that I touched on very briefly earlier, and that is the era that we live in now, the COVID-19 era and the pandemic. Make-A-Wish of South Florida prepared themselves in many ways. You have excellent leadership that made the decision early on, let's make sure that financially we're set. Unfortunately, that's that can't be said for every nonprofit around the country because there's so many of them right now that are that are desperate, that are trying to find ways to to stay afloat. Here's a report from Houston, where indeed there's one organization that has that exact problem. CDH International, a nonprofit for children, is stretching every single dollar. It has really caused a lot of havoc on our charity. The charity, founded by Don Ireland, helps young patients born with a rare diaphragm and lung defect. The pandemic has CDH at a near standstill. It is going to be a very long recovery for our, our community, 
and our charity. According to the National Council of Nonprofits, about 1.6 million nonprofit jobs have been lost over the past three months and 13% of nonprofits have been forced to suspend some or all of their operations. Tim Delaney is the council's president. We're often referred to as uh, the good people, the angels who are out there doing things. Well, I'm here to tell you that angels have to pay their rent. A COVID-19 survivor herself, Dawn has turned to online fundraising. And if we go under, there is no one who's going to do what we do. There's hope for charities like Dawn's that have been around for more than five years. The Federal Reserve announced its Main Street Lending Program. It's designed to offer financial help to nonprofits struggling during the pandemic. Richard, I think it's fair to say that Make-A-Wish can give some advice here because the Make-A-Wish of South Florida organization is so together and ready for all of this. So then let's look at all those other charities out there. There's thousands of them out there. At this time, with COVID-19 putting a dent in everybody's manner of getting the donations, those donations, those sponsors, so so critical every single day. What's the advice here to, to help them along and, and how can we... How can we give them a little something to to get out there? Because they still have to promote. You still have to get out there. You still have to tell the stories. You still have to be a part of the community, yet you don't have the money that you used to have. Or the volunteers, let's bring that too, because it's not like everybody can gather at the office like they used to. Now everybody is is scattered more than ever. All right. No, I, and it, it is important for us. We recognized early on, on in the pandemic that it was important for us to uh, stay in touch with our donors, our volunteers, our supporters, um, to just have additional touch points. You know, ones that didn't cost us a lot of money, did, that didn't, that weren't, you know, that were, that were as effective as uh, as showing them wishes or at, uh, introducing them to our mission. Um, so we've managed to do that. We've created those touch points, and we've created a case for why we need them in this time, and why we will need them when we return to doing our normal business operation. Uh, as I said at the top, we were we, we've been fortunate that uh, we've had some really consistently great leadership, and we have great donors uh, and supporters that have recognized that uh, a wish is a healing experience. A wish is impactful, and they've given us the financial resources to go out and do that. And then we've been smart with smart stewards of their money. So when we get a donation. Um, we spend it wisely. We spend most of it on uh, uh, on the wish experience uh, and on our mission. And then what we have left over, we save for a rainy day. And it's raining now, so um, we're in a position uh, to to be able to sock, have that money socked away. So then we continue our mission. We uh, we're able to do that uh, in full force. Uh, but for for other nonprofits, um, you know my word of advice would be uh, to continue touching your donors and your volunteers and your supporters, continue reaching out to them, and continue to remind them why you're important. And um, when we get through all of this, which we will, uh, we'll be there on the other side, ready to, cont to continue our mission. What do you hear from sponsors? I mean, let's go with sponsors first, not just donors, but the sponsors are the big money for every charity. And what are they telling you as we go through a, a completely unknown time, and even they don't know what their profit margin is going to be by the end of the year. We have a lot of great sponsors and a lot of great donors that understand the need, that understand what we're going through and everybody is going through. And uh, we're patiently, patiently waiting if they are uh, not able to support us right now. And that, but there are some that understand the need and have given more. Uh, that have dug a little bit deeper and said, here you go, you guys can use this. And there's a certain level of trust that goes between a nonprofit and their donors and their supporters. So uh, we've been able to build trust over the over a course of time uh, with our donors and our supporters, our corporate sponsors, that they know we're going to be good stewards of their money. So um, so they dig a little bit deeper. They give us a little bit more when when and if they can. And they know that we're going to put that money to good use. Fair to say, though, that South Florida, and this organization takes up a huge area of South Florida from the West Coast to the East Coast. Sure. You're lucky in many ways because of where you are, quite frankly. You hit the Tampa market, which is a big a top 20 market, a lot of money there as well. The South Florida market, a lot of money there as well. 
you've got to feel very lucky that you're here knowing full well that there are other places and I'm certain there are other Make-A-Wish organizations too that are having a tough time because of where they are. They are, and, and we're we are. You're right. We are fortunate to live in an area uh, or areas that are very giving, um, that are significant markets, uh, that are for, in some cases wealthy markets. But all that money isn't sitting there laying in the street. We're going out and finding it. Uh, we're finding and making the case for why we're an important organization of support. You mentioned trust a couple of minutes ago, and that was the, the second big news issue that I wanted to make sure we hit on. At a time like this, there are legitimate charities. There are people who need help, who want to make sure they help others. However, just like any other time, when something like this happens, out of the, out of the woodwork come the rats and the people who are always looking to hurt those and, and hurt the effort indeed. The scams run by charitable, quote-unquote, organizations, have multiplied here in the COVID-19 era. And in this report, it's a good way to understand exactly what's happening and how people need to be aware of those unscrupulous individuals out there who are just trying to scam a buck. A crisis like this is exactly when we see scams because scammers are opportunists. If they can frighten you sufficiently, they'll be able to easily defraud you. One of the most common ways to steal your money in times like this is through fake charities. The natural human reaction is compassion and wanting to help. Online, there have been reports of scam emails trying to con people into donating to fake fundraising efforts. For example, claiming to be a government program to develop a coronavirus vaccine. When you give, we want your money to go to where you want it to go and not to line the pockets of a criminal. There are websites designed to help you determine the real from the fake charity. Use GuideStar, Give.org, or Charity Watch to check coronavirus charity websites. Don't respond to unsolicited emails or texts. Don't give phone solicitors any credit card or personal info, and don't give cash. The BBB can also help you figure out if a fake charity or scam is operating in your area with its scam tracker website. Here's one scam I found on there that said, because of COVID-19, the government's increasing Social Security benefits by $105, but you need to verify your information by calling a special hotline. The Attorney General says that's phishing and to be aware of things like that. That is a scam. They're trying to steal your money. Richard, what's the cooperation that Make-A-Wish of South Florida has with the state government and others to make sure that, obviously, the Make-A-Wish Foundation is up and above uh, <laughs> a grade A-plus organization, but working with these various state organizations to make sure that others don't get hurt? Well, we're registered 501c3 with, uh, with the state and the federal government, and, uh, you know, we're... Uh, as was mentioned in that in that report, GodStar and Cherry Navigator, and th these are watchdog groups that use uh, financials and other information from the from the nonprofits uh, to give ratings and, and guides um, on the financial health uh, of an organization. So they're making sure that you're that you're spending what you say you're spending on your mission and not on overhead or some other cost. So we we're watched. Uh, all the time. Uh, we're watched and judged uh, by, by the Better Business Bureau, by the uh, federal government, by the state government. Um, so, and, but I, my advice to, uh, to people that are approached by, um, you know, by these organizations to just be skeptical uh, and do your homework. And if it, if, it, if it doesn't feel right, it probably isn't right. Um, and Really lean into the organizations that you know where the money is going. That you, or you can you can learn where the money is going. You can do your research, and you can figure out that uh, and it feels good to you. And you can figure out where that money is actually going. And fair to say that if you look at the social media, we have your social media sites up here right now on the screen. If you go to the social media, you can see what's happening on Facebook and Twitter. You can understand what's happening. You can look at the history. You can then go back on the links. If you look at the website, you can figure it out. It doesn't take much to figure out if a website is real or not. And also there's phone numbers. I mean, it's it's there's, there's a voluminous amount of information that people need. And you shake sure. your head sometimes going... Didn't you check? How could you? How could you yeah. not do this? That in itself has just got to be astounding to you when when you think about this. Yeah, and and you know, it, it takes all kinds, and and we see we see reports like that all the time, and 
Um, so, but we just we do what we can do to educate the public. We do what we do what we can do to be a transparent organization, and we are. We're obviously we're a nationally and internationally known nonprofit, a well-respected one of the top ten most well-respected nonprofits in the world. And so people know who we are, and they can, but they can check us out if they you know are the least bit, bit skeptical. All of our information is on our website at sfla.wish.org. Uh, through all of our social media sites, all of our 990s and all of our, our tax documents and all of our financial information is all published online. So go check. It's a good thing. Okay. Good advice. Personal now. You and I have known each other, as I said, a long time. And I saw your involvement kind of move along and at make wish over the years. It has to be that inception point. When somebody decides that this is the right thing for me, what was it for you? Well, I'll tell you, actually, it was before I ever got, ever got to make a wish. And um, you and I know each other from back from our Miami Dolphins days. And uh, part of what I did there is a lot of the make a wish uh, wishes. And Dan Marino was, you know, Dan Marino at the time, it was, uh, you know, late 80s, early 90s. And he did a lot of wishes, did a great job. And I got to facilitate those wishes. And I just saw in the eyes of a wish kid and their families what that meant to them. And I got to talk to them and, and experience these things with them and, and see what magic a, a wish brings. And, and um, you know, through luck and fortune, I had an opportunity to come aboard to make a wish. And uh, since day one, I had not regretted that decision. And it just it's just this mountain that built on top of each other. Each wish, each experience, each person that I meet, they're more inspirational than, than the next. And, and uh, you know, so these donors and supporters and volunteers, most of them are not uh, positively affected by our organization personally. You know, they're not wish families. They're not, you know, they're not wish kids. They're just people that see uh, the compelling nature of what we do and see the impact that a wish can have on a family. And so they depart with their time and their treasure and, and they understand the need and, and why they should be supporting this organization. And that's inspirational to me. And every day, when you can be inspired every day by a job that you have, um, it's just, there's no better feeling. There's no better feeling than seeing these wishes happen. And that, frankly, it is part of the, you know, this bummer of a, of a time that we're in is because we're not able to grant the wishes at the same rate and the same clip that we have normally uh, been able to. And um, so we're all itching to get back to it. We're all itching, itching to get back to granting two, two, basically two wishes a day, uh, almost, almost 700 wishes a year. We're ready to get back to it and ready to be inspired and ready to meet a lot of these families who we know their lives are going to be forever impacted and forever improved by the wish experience. All right, I put you on the spot. You've done, how many, how many wishes have you been involved in, would you say, you personally? Uh, yes. Well, our organization is almost almost 12,000, and I came in when we had granted about 1,500, so almost maybe 10,000, 10,500, maybe almost 11,000 wishes. 10,000, so this should be an easy question for you then. I mean, I have, I have no doubt that you'll be able to Here it comes. <laughs> Here it comes. You know what it is, the one that to this day 10,000 wishes later still leaves a lump in your throat. Sure. Um, you know, their wishes are like your kids. You can't pick one, but I am going to pick one for you. Um, so we granted a wish about five or six, maybe seven years ago of a young man. He was seven at the time. I think he's 14 or 15 now um, who wanted to be a superhero. He wanted to be a superhero and he made up his own superhero uh, persona. He was striker boy. And there are very specific things that he wanted to do. He wanted to, you remember that one? I remember uh, Striker Boy. Yeah, he wanted to save. Uh, he wanted to dismantle a bomb in a soccer game. He wanted to put out a fire. He wanted to be uh, a, a policeman for for the day. Uh, he wanted to be a superhero, and so we got the opportunity to create a superhero experience um, for him. But it wasn't in a vacuum. You know, we got to involve the entire community, um, on different facets, different facets of the uh, Broward County Sheriff's Department, and just the Nova Southeastern University and all these different entities that came together to grant that wish. We're getting word from local authorities that Sneaky Pete, the alligator mutant, has escaped from prison and has robbed a local bank. We believe he might be planning to do more if he's not stopped. So take a close look 
at this picture right here. He's considered to be highly dangerous and is not to be approached at all costs. Police are now on high alert looking for this villain and local authorities are asking for Striker Boy to stop him and save the city from danger. If you're out there, Striker Boy, we desperately need your help more than ever. Amazing day, um, Striker Boy and Falcon Boy. They saved the day. They did put Sneaky Pete back in back in jail. 
they uh, dismantled the bomb, they uh, made the, the soccer game safe, and uh, they just did amazing things for their community, and they're two amazing, amazing young men that really deserve a lot of credit, and uh, we're real happy with, with, with everything you guys did. You guys are true heroes, and uh, you all understand that? You guys are heroes, so the community thanks you. And those to me are the most gratifying because most wishes happen and you don't know about them until we talk about them afterwards. The child goes to Disney World, they go on a cruise, they go to see Snow, they meet a celebrity. We talk about them afterwards, but to get involved, to get involved in that wish, hands on, cheering, uh, you know, uh, um, and, and to be there and watch it unfold is just completely different. It's a completely different experience from seeing pictures and watching videos and, and some of the other things. So um, that one in particular, because of the community aspect of it and, it's, and so many different people coming together to make that wish happen. And, you know, you can't forget about not just the people that were there that day, but the people that, that write the check to underwrite the cost of that wish, you know, the volunteers that go into the wish uh, family's home and help determine what that child's wish is. Uh, so there's so many different people that play a part in that wish experience. And that to me is really, really gratifying. So to leave a, leave a lump in my throat, yeah, absolutely. With regard to referrals then becomes the next thing because people are always thinking about how they wanna get kids involved. On the screen right now, for those that are watching us live and watching us on video, you can see whom Make-A-Wish accepts referrals from. And you have some, there's some very specific things here. Yes, Richard? I mean, it's not like anybody can just get involved here. You do make, it's, it's a very specific decision-making process. Well, virtually anybody can refer a child. They typically come from medical professionals, people that are intimately involved with the wish child's uh, medical experience and family members. Uh, so people that know that a wish that child may qualify for our services. So anybody can refer a child. So the process is, is that we take that referral, then we get some basic, very basic information, and then we go to the child's doctor and basically say, does this child qualify for a wish? Do they meet the conditions uh, that will qual qualify them for a wish? Some of them you see on the screen there, and then some of them we just rely on the doctor to, to certify that that child has a life-threatening uh, life threatening or critical illness. And once that is determined, every child gets a wish. You know, that's, some, that's one of the, the questions that we answer frequently is how do you determine which, which, kid, which kids are going to get wishes? And um, the, the short answer is we don't. They all get them. Um, so if a child qualifies uh, for a wish and has never, uh, never had a wish before and lives or is treated in one of our counties here in South Florida, they're going to get a wish. And we're going to move heaven and earth to make, make sure those wishes happen. And we can find the funding to grant those wishes and we can recruit the volunteers that it takes uh, to fulfill our mission. So um, referrals are more critical now than ever. They will continue to be. It, it is the first step in the wish process is getting that child referred because we just we don't walk into hospitals and, and knock on doors and try and find the wish kids. We educate the medical professionals. We educate the community on who qualifies and ask them to refer the child. How important are these wishes to the parents? I mean, the kids are one thing, but I got to believe that the parents, it's tough to turn off the waterworks a lot of times when they see their kids who are so in need getting involved in something so emotional. You know, I, I briefly mentioned it before, but one of the most gratifying things to me about our organization is the family aspect of it. And the parents have told us, and it's becoming more frequent, but they've told us over and over again that the wish helps them return to some sense of normalcy, um, even for that brief period of time. And, you know, after the wish has happened, you know, uh, we uh, I was just talking to a wish mom not too long ago who said that their wish their travel on their wish was the first time they got to eat a meal together in almost a year um, because of their child's treatment, because the mom and dad were passing ships in the night, there's siblings, there's other people that, that are involved in the family, and they just don't get to eat meals together. They certainly don't get to travel together. They just don't, they don't get to be a family unit. And um, a wish provides them with that opportunity to be a family unit, to be a family again, to experience just just joy again, to experience smiles and laughter. Um, 
even for that brief period of time and the memories that a wish creates. And so we've heard that over and over again. And again, it's a, one of the more gratifying things that we do is being a part of this healing process for a family. Is it tough emotionally to get involved in this? Because let's be honest, there's a lot of kids involved here who are suffering from debilitating diseases, deadly diseases, if you will. Some may not have very long to live. I, deep down inside of the big, thick, red-headed skull, I'm, a, I'm an emotional baby when it comes to a lot of this stuff. I, I don't know how I'd be able to keep it together. It, it's got to be difficult for the volunteers, for the people involved. You, you still understand what you're doing. That's, that's an emotional time. Our volunteers tell us all the time that they get more out of it than they put into it. And so what the emotional healing that they get from it is something that is it easily outdistances the time and the effort that they put into it. And um, on the staff side, we feel the same way. You know, the, the wish kids are put in situations that are sad uh, and they're, uh, you know, they're emotional uh, on the negative. But what we're doing for them is so emotionally uplifting that it outweighs that. You know, so what we're doing, we focus on what we're able to give to the child, and that is hope and strength and joy to continue to fight. And um, so w what we're doing is the happy phase of their life. And yes, what they're going through to, to be able to qualify for a wish isn't so great for them. Um, but we tend to focus on what we're doing for them and this respite to, that we're giving them and hopefully, you know, mem many memories that we can create long past their childhood and into adulthood. As we're here and recording the show on August the 4th, with still such a, a long way to go in, in what we're going through here with COVID-19, how has it been in this summer? Because you're not in your office, you're at home. Nobody's able to gather. I mean, I've been in the office before with wonderful people and volunteers, but what's it been like trying to get through this summer? It's uh, it, we're not unlike other uh, for profits or not for profits. We're trying to figure it out every day, and um, you know, so we're we're continuing to grant wishes. We're continuing to try and find re uh, referrals, uh, children to be referred to the organization. Um, you know, fundraising is 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 different in this era of no events. Um, we're not having in-person events, um, which are uh, the backbone of a lot of our fundraising. But we're, we're continuing to fundraise. We're continuing to uh, try and find those funding sources um, that will uh, continue to assist us uh, through this era and understand that uh, what we're gonna be coming through on the other side. Um, so it's, I mean, it's, it's sort of an emotional bummer, Ed. I won't, I won't lie. That it's an emotional bummer that we're not able to grant wishes at the clip that we're, that we're able to. Uh, we did grant uh, Summer's wish. You see on the screen here, we did grant Summer, Summer's wish that this is in the era of COVID. Um, uh, but it, it's certainly not at the same pace that we're, that we're accustomed to uh, granting those wishes. So uh, it's emotionally defeating on that side, but we know business continues to go on. And um, we're doing everything that we can do to remind our donors, our supporters, and our volunteers that we're still here. Uh, we're we're going to be here in full force once it's safe to grant wishes again. And we're here to remind the wish kids that their wishes aren't canceled. They're just on, uh, they're on hold. Uh, they're postponed. And Do the kids understand? They, I mean, when you talk to the kids, what, what's their reaction? You know, I think they, I think they do. You know, they, certainly uh, the older kids have a different level of understanding than the younger kids. Um, we are, uh, you know, we're certainly open to uh, children changing their wishes uh, if they choose to. Um, so the wish you just saw there actually of Summer who wanted the uh, French Bulldog. Her original wish was to go to Paris, but she knew she wasn't going to be able to go anytime soon. Uh, so she changed her wish to get a French Bulldog. So, um, so that's, you know, that's a COVID era uh, wish change uh, that may not have happened had we been in normal times. So I think some of the kids do understand. The parents certainly understand. And, uh, you know, in, with the parents and the families and what they're dealing with on, on an everyday basis, COVID is like a, you know, this era is like a speed bump to them. And, um, you know, it's a bummer because it's almost like you're, you know, you bring a child to Christmas, but then you tell them you can't, can't they can't unwrap mm -hmm. the presents and um, just yet. And, um, but we're just going to be, be patient. We're con continuing in, uh, to stay in touch with our wish uh, families. We're doing what we call wish enhancements. 
Uh, so those are reminders that their wish is uh, going to happen eventually, but it just it just can't happen now. We had uh, a wish enhancement. We have a, a young man who whose whose wish is to go to the uh, Subaru factory. Um, and um, and <laughs> Subaru is a new one. <laughs> yeah, it's a new one for us. But Subaru is such a great partner for us. So we partnered with the local Subaru and the Subaru Club to to do a wish enhancement, and they drove. Uh, it had to be 75 or 80 Subarus, souped up Subarus down Daniel Street. Uh, so that was a really cool thing. Um, you know, so we have a couple of others that uh, other uh, wish enhancements that are that are on tap. We have one actually it's happening this Sunday in in Sarasota, in the Sarasota area, uh, for a girl that wanted an online shopping spree. And we're doing a car parade um, of employees of Culver's, another great local sponsor, who are going to be driving by and dropping off the products from her online shopping spree. So we're making adjustments in the COVID era uh, to make the wish um, uh, 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 an experience that's as close as possible to what we normally deliver. I want to remind people that wait for the end of the show because one of the the recent wishes in the COVID-19 era will be featured as we head on out. So stick around for that. I do. I, I cannot get away without saying that, you know, we've known each other long enough. You you watch. I'm the dog guy. I mean, to watch the, the summer and the bulldog was was perfect. But I want you to keep doing more like Zoe and Snowflake. That's do more like that. More dogs, Richard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We um, the dog wishes are really cool. And Zoe's wish um, was just so. A such a great example of what an impact something as fair, seems to be so innocuous as a, a, a girl wishing for a dog can be so life changing, and that is Zoe's best friend. I think that wish was granted maybe seven eight months ago, certainly within the year, yeah. and that child does not go anywhere without that dog, and that is her new best friend and. It's helping her through treatment. It's helping her through tough times. Um, you can see she's, you know, that's, that's a medically fragile child. And for, for what that dog has provided to her and her family, we hear from her mom a, a lot about how that dog has changed her life. I'm losing it, man. I can't do this. You put a dog in the it's picture. It's happy, though. It's happy, though, Ed. It's happy. I know. I, I, it's, it's very happy. I love to see that because personally, I think every child should have a dog. Not a cat, not a rat, not a snake. Every child should have a dog. But then again, that's just me. I know. No, the cat. No, you're going to upset the cat people. So you I'm have not, to. Uh, no, you have no, to no I don't want to upset the cat, cat people. It's it's oh. no. Have a cat too, okay? But oh, I want God. everybody to have a dog because okay. I'm a dog. I'm a dog person too, and the dog and the dog wishes are really really cool. And uh, so we can do the dog wishes, and we've done a few of them over the summer. Um, but uh, but I mean, it's, it's just these wishes are so magical, they're so different, they're so life changing that that's the emotionally uplifting part of this is is changing another person's life. And, you know, when you can walk out of the office for the day or put your head on the pillow for the night and know that you changed a life is such a really, really cool thing. And you don't have to just work for a make a wish. You can uh, donate. You can be a volunteer. You can be some other supporter um, and feel that same feeling. And there's no better feeling, I, trust me, there's no better feeling than changing a life of a child. And as a parent myself, I see it in the parents' eyes, too, um, what, how, what we're doing for them. You know, when you're a parent, you'll do anything for your children. And, um, you know, if you would take their illness away from them, you would, you would do anything. So for, to have these people come into your life and provide that child with a wish, with something that's just, you know, an experience like no other um, is gratifying to them and it's something that you know that gives me the energy to keep this train moving we sacrifice for our kids i'll sacrifice for my dogs anytime <laughs> reminder right. let's make sure everybody knows how to get a hold first of all the make a wish website you see it on the screen if you're watching us on youtube facebook or twitter also if you're watching us on the download version as well if you're not if you're listening on the audio podcast it's at https did i get that right yeah the tps um colon slash slash sfla.wish.org go to the website there also there's the social media Facebook is at Make-A-Wish S-F-L-A Twitter is Make-A-Wish S-F-L-A smart man you are, make it easy for people 
Well, you know, we make don't like it, to confuse people. Make, make it easy for people. And also, if you want to contact Make-A-Wish, Southern Florida, they take care of. Richard, again, you're in You're in how many markets now with the, the Southern Florida chapter? Well, we're in uh, we're in 22 counties in, in, in South Florida, but we, we basically go to, for, up to Vero Beach on the east side of Florida and up to the Tampa area on the west side and all the way down through Key West. So we have we have counties all across the state. Um, you know, our media markets are Palm Beach, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, um, Southwest Florida and, and the Sarasota Tampa area. So there you go. That's if you want to contact them about any wishes there, get some information, talk about what you can do, what might be coming up after COVID-19, because as Richard said, they're still working every single day. 888-773-9474. I'm going to give you the last word here to thank the volunteers, because, I, you know, I, I have to say you've been nice enough and, and other people there have been nice enough to get me involved at a very, very light level with with what goes on here with the um, with the galas and with others with other things you're you're one of my great friends between Stu and Bob and and everybody else that's involved Norm everybody else that's in, that that is in that organization just wonderful people here but you really got to give a shout out because I know the volunteers are going to watch that and they need to get a shout out here the, everybody I mean volunteers are the backbone of our organization and we couldn't do what we do you know in a typical in a typical year uh, last year, actually, our last full year of granting wishes, we granted over 625 wishes, and and there are two volunteers that are assigned to each wish, and they meet with the wish child a minimum of two or three times. So, you know, so if you do the math, it's almost 1,500, maybe close to 2,000 nights or weekends that these people are away from their families, um, helping somebody else and changing their lives. And and that's an inspirational thing, just as inspirational as the donors and supporters who will help fund those wishes. And we need all of those people to make that wish come true. And um, so there's so many different aspects from, um, as I mentioned, from the people that refer the, refer the child the, to the people that adopt the wish, pay for it, and the volunteers that work on the wish. Um, there are so many different people that get involved in a wish experience. And I think that's what makes it extra gratifying for us is you just need all of these people. You rely on all those people and, and they are all kind hearted, um, believe in helping their fellow man and woman. Uh, and that, that is a, that is an inspiration and we c could not do it without them. Um, that we rely on them so much and we, we try to thank them as much as, as much as we can. But again, they say, you know, we don't need the thanks because we get more out of this than what we put in. I will tell you, just watching the uh, the eyes of the kids is certainly worth it. Thank you to the volunteers. Thanks to everybody. Richard, thanks so much, my friend. It's an absolute pleasure. Continued success with the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Keep making kids happy because it's wonderful to watch and see. And I know that you and I will argue through the college football season. If there is a college football Oh, we can only hope. We can only hope. I, I know. I know you. I'm thinking every single day that something comes down in the state of Florida. I go. I can see Richard right now. He's just. He's praying to his Florida State memorabilia every single moment to to play football. But oh, those positivity rates in Leon County. <laughs> no, no, no. Let's let's not go. Let's let's please let's let's not go there right now. I did, it will open up a whole new can of worms that I don't want to start. Richard, okay. thanks so much, my friend. Take care. We'll talk to you real soon. Thanks a million. It is always a pleasure. Richard Kelly is the COO of the Make-A-Wish of Southern Florida organization. Make sure you get a hold of him again. Here you go. I just want to, we get it on. I don't care if the graphics are wrong. I don't care. 888-773-9474. Make sure you can contact him there. If you want to get a hold of them on social media, here. I'll even move it over so that everybody can see it. There you go. Make-A-Wish SFLA. And Make-A-Wish SFLA is both Facebook and Twitter. And if you want to go to the website as well, you can get there to learn all about what they're doing. You go to sflawish, sfla.wish.org. Be a part of this organization. It'll be one of the best things you ever do. It'll make you feel good every single day of your life because it is worth every single second that you spend. Thanks to Richard Kelly. Thanks to Stu. Thanks to Norm. Thanks to Bob. Thanks to everybody for being a part of this. Thank you very much for being part of this. And make sure that you spend a moment or two and think about those who need a little extra here in a very difficult summer. For everybody, I'm Ed Berliner. Thanks for joining us on The Man in the, Re uh, Man in the Arena. See what happens? You get emotional and the, the lips go away. Thanks for joining us on The Man in the Arena. Oh, man. Rock on, true believers. See ya.
It was a day any six-year-old would have loved. But especially this one. Six-year-old Maverick lives in Davie with his family and since 2018 has battled leukemia. But like his mom, Stephanie, said, you'd probably never notice. He's a firecracker. He's very outgoing. He can tell you anything you need to know about dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are Maverick's thing. So it was no surprise when Make-A-Wish called, Maverick asked to go on the set with Chris Pratt and uh, meet some dinosaurs. His trip to the set of Jurassic World 3 is on hold because of the coronavirus. So instead, smile big, baby, smile big. Make-A-Wish partnered with Ultimate Software and the Florida Panthers to give Maverick an enhanced wish. For wish kids, this can be a bummer. You know, they've, they've wished, they've dreamed, they've experienced, you know, experienced uh, all of that, uh, the process of Make-A-Wish, and now their wish is on hold, and that could be a bummer. But there were no bummed out kids here. From fire trucks to decked out cars, it was all about dinosaurs and all about Maverick. When a kid wants everything dinosaurs and he's got an outgoing personality and he just he's just going to love today and what today represents. And that's a community of people that are coming together to give a child that they don't know some joy. But this is kind of a reminder for them to show him that they're still thinking about him and that they wish him well. And through all of quarantine, they wanted to do something. Maverick's wish not canceled, just postponed for now.